I'm down at Sultan's Marina in Poole this morning with Wessex Marine because they very kindly let us behind the scenes of what they do when a brand new stock boat arrives and how they get it from this point here, shrink wrapped and on the chocks to in the water and ready for sea trial and ready for customers to come and have a look. So this boat arrived last week, came from the factory in Lithuania, was unloaded from the lorry and put on these chocks over the weekend. Now it's Monday morning and the first thing to do is get all this shrink wrapping off. And this particular model is a Marex 310. Very popular model. They've sold a few from here. And this is going to be a stock boat for Wessex Marine. David, who owns Wessex Marine, has posed a very good question that maybe someone would like to answer in the comments of this video. How do they wrap the hull when it's in slings at the factory? It's wrapped entirely. There's no gaps in this shrink wrap at all. So if you know how they do that, please post the answer in the comments below. And this um, is this is ready to go from the factory. There's nothing really you have to do in terms of adding kit or anything like no, that. No, I it's mean, I mean, obviously, we're a department. Obviously, so it depends on the owner. I mean, so, I mean, with Marix and Target, I mean, 99% of the time, all the gear that people want fitted is is um, is factory fitted. But occasionally, uh, there are some things that, for whatever reason, an owner's wanting to add X, Y, and Z, which means that. Um, you know, we've got to do retrofit stuff on it, but yeah, ge generally speaking, they arrive they ready, come to, ready to go. They, they, they come, they come ready to go. Um, so, um, uh, which is quite nice, really. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, there's not really that much to do to sort of get 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 them ready, but Marix do a, a, a well, arguably too good a job at actually preparing the boat for shrink wrap because there's, they put all this stuff over absolutely everything. Yeah, it's all covered, the, isn't it? Every single railing on the boat yeah. has got this protection on, uh, which takes more than um, takes more than five minutes to get it off. Yeah, I bet. Um, so uh, that's normally something that we fiddle around with once it's um, you know once it's afloat really. But they um, they certainly do a very nice job of the um, you know protecting the uh, of protecting the boat. Um, yeah, just means it's a fiddly job with yeah. fingernails to get it all off. Yeah, yeah, with. sure. Um, so, um, and the, the, they come, the, I mean, they all, obviously, they all come waxed, wa you know, fully waxed, polished from the factory, um, but anyway, we do, a, we put an extra coat of wax on when the boat, uh, before the boat goes in, because obviously, the, the, the rest of the top size we can do when it's in the water, of course, but the hull, we, there's only one time to do that, and that's now, so the moment we've got the wrap off, um, we give it an extra, and the protective off the side, we give it an extra, uh, an extra coat of wax before it goes in and then um, we don't need to but it's just something yeah, we, nice we, we, see, we like yeah. to do just, sure. to keep it, yep. just to keep it nice really. Next, it was time for Seb from Golden Arrow Marine to perform the pre-delivery inspection, or PDI. Does that involve? Oh, not much really, just a check, general check of the bellows, check yeah. of all the steering hoses and the trim pipes, all the necessary equipment okay. really. Just yeah. to, and check the oil, it's just the main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's not much to check on these, but they're, they're so far so good, pretty robust units. Good, good. So, uh, yeah. So this doesn't involve, uh, you know, firing it up, sea trial, anything like not that? Not here, no. no. We do that when she goes back in the water. I think okay. We just do a low speed calibration, check all the gears and everything. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Right, ready when you are, guy. That's about your lot, guy. That'll do, Will. Perfect. How many of these do you reckon you've done in your time? Quite a few. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it a long time now. Yeah. <laughs> Now they're a lovely boat, these Marys, just to be fair, they're, mm. they're a very, you know, good quality build. So this process is the same every time, is it? Yeah, it yeah. You just go through, check all the bonding wires, check all the connections and stuff, make sure we've got no 
O-rings and bits and bobs hanging out. Yeah. All looking very good. Excellent. Did you take a look at the engine during this process as well, or is this purely the drive? Yeah, this is just the drive, and yeah. when she goes in the water, um, I, will, I will check the engine. I mean, normally on another boat which hasn't been run at the factory, I would do that pre yeah. putting in the water, but okay. because these boats are run at the factory three or four hours, yeah. you know, it, it, you don't really need to. But once she goes in the water, I'll do all the um, low speed calibration and just make sure everything works and then they and take I her do, out for I, And I do the high speed calibration. Don't you I? certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my calibration is quite different to yours. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy this, but amazingly, every boat we get on of a, of a light model feels different and we can tell in the first 10 minutes of float. That's interesting. How it's going to go. Uh, it should all be rubber stamped just the same, but uh, there's fast boats and not so fast boats and smooth and installations and rattles and things. It's amazing how different these things can be. There you go, so that's a clean bill of health from Seb at Golden Arrow. A quick look at the drive there, just a quick inspection to check everything is as it should be. He will also do the engine as well, but that's when the boat goes into the water. This particular boat's got a single Volvo Penta D6, 380 horsepower engine, single Duropop stern drive. As you can see these counter-rotating stainless steel props. Here you can see the Volvo Penta interceptor system. So those blades you control from the helm, blades come down here and they adjust the trim of the boat as it moves through the water. And then this is the anti-corrosion system that Volvo uses. So these are here to absorb any electrolysis that may start eating away at the drive itself and the props. These are sacrificial so that they take that instead of the important stuff that is contained in this unit here. So the polishing is nearly over, looks like. And uh, what's next guys, she in the water? Uh, yeah, so she should be going to walk in the next 10 or 15 minutes, hopefully. So oh, yeah. that's the next job. If you can pick up that shine, that looks pretty good.
they don't come with zero hours on the engine. They've no, run them up at the factory, they, they, have they? They'll, they'll run them up. I mean, it depends on the individual boat, but uh, they'll run them up normally. Uh, normally, it's got between normally between sort of three and five hours normally. Um, so they're, they're not, you know, they don't come completely green. Um, but uh, so we know, you know, we know they're gonna gonna be ready to run. But obviously yeah. Although they are. There we go. Here we are, box fresh Marex. How does she feel, David? All seem okay? Uh, yeah, oh yes, yeah, fine. Yeah, we get to know uh, almost straight away. It's a feeling I can't quantify. Yeah. If there's something awry, you can tell. Uh, yeah, it's the, the most likely uh, thing we find out from the hoist is uh, the engine, the stern drive, won't automatically engage in into gear when it's brand new. Right. But uh, this boat will have run 5.4 hours, so so are it's they actually authority. running that out at speed or is that they just are running, running the engine? Running it out on the water at, at work. Right. For five hours to check that it's right. So that's all sort of pre um, shipping testing that's from the factory. testing and it goes back into the factory to be laundered and cleaned and polished to be like new and shrink wrap. Right. Just five and a half hours on the block. And they just splash for how much fuel we got here? Oh, less than a quarter. Yeah. Just enough to get to the. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, enough to, uh, to do the basics. And the first thing we look at is have they uh, selected English language on the plotter? Yes. But it's all totally complete, really, isn't it? Uh, I mean, yeah. Obviously, you've got the the, the mast here, yeah. ready to go on, but everything else yes. is it's turn your key and go, isn't it? It is, effectively. We yeah. do more work than we need to do. Yeah. Uh, we do a complete commission check again, although the factory have already done it. We do it again as a double dose uh, and check all systems. Uh, we'll put water in, yeah. uh, check uh, domestic plumbing, and so then drain the water again at this time of the year. So the team have just put some diesel in the tank and they're just going to run the boat back to their berth so that Seb from Golden Arrow can come and do the uh, check of the engine make sure that that's uh, as it all should be before they head out uh, into the harbour to just do uh, a quick shakedown Now we are going to take the boat out for a quick spin just to make sure everything is working as it should be but if you want to see a full review of this model the 310 sun cruiser we have got a full test of the boat on the channel and i'll put the link to that in the description below the video right we're just here now to check all the general equipment like the belts all the uh connections bits and bobs engine feet engine oil level coolant level just to make sure everything's been installed up to standard and then will you run the engine up and yeah, I'll run the engine do up some checks then Carry well. out a uh, low speed calibration okay. and just do some general checks with what, the... Uh, what does the low speed calibration entail? What it does is with these new drives you're allowed to, you can slip the clutch so it makes you can go very low speed when you're driving in marinas and right. stuff like that. Yeah, so, uh, okay. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, other right. than that that's right. pretty much it really. Let you crack on. Okay. What's the laptop going to do then, Seth? Uh, we have to do something called a vessel component report, which is what you have to do on these modern uh, EVC2 engines. And it, it just basically it's basically reads back to central systems and just lets them know all the data on the boat, 
and uh, it's basically just a way of keeping on in contact with all the vessels that Volvo have. Okay. A year's time away from modem on the engine to report failures? Uh, I, I don't know, I think. It's or is it closer sort of, than that? It's pretty, de pretty much there now. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, that's why they do this VCR, so they yeah. now they'll talk to the boat and if anybody yeah. ever does any other work on it in the future, yeah, they can go straight back to where yeah. it was commissioned yeah. and they know everything about the yeah. boat. It's, it's a clever idea, it is yeah. a clever idea. Yeah. And it does work. So yeah. uh, I might as well take this top right off there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, in the, coming in the future is commercial, like commercial trucks. Where so it's sort of over the air, a bit like what Tesla do. Send, send yeah, that's updates it. and things yeah, like that. So you're, it's you're actually built modem, into the boat. You yeah. have a modem on the engine to talk uh, to someone on shore regarding diagnosis and fix. Yeah. What does that plug into on the boat, Seb? It plugs into the VMN, which is the vessel main module, which is just under here. Okay. Unlike the old engines where you had to um, you plug into the engine itself. Yeah. And, and if you were doing a boat with twin engines, you'd plug into both engines. Whereas with this, you can access both engines through the one unit, which right. is very handy. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Especially when you've got things like IPS and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very handy. Yeah. Very handy. Is the commissioning system for an IPS boat? Longer than say a stone It, it is, yeah, it is. You've got a uh, well, I suppose usually, you've got the joystick in the mix as well. Yeah, usually at the factory they do a lot of the bits and bobs like the steering lining up and all of that. But we just got to check it all yep. basically. We just got to check it, make sure it's it's done as it should be, which usually they are. We've only had a couple where we've got to uh, adjust a few bits and bobs. Yeah. Simple as that, eh? Yeah, nice and easy. And checked and reported back. Yeah, all, that's all the information on the vessel reported back. It'll do that until you turn the ignition off and back on again, and then it'll um, it'll be good. Fab. Well, the engine has been given the thumbs up by the engineer, so now we are going to head out and give it a run. The guys are just putting the covers on to keep the cushions in pristine condition as they are brand new but luckily on a Marix that doesn't take long because of the much lauded curtain system but you're seeing it in all its glory here how quickly this thing can go from being completely open with the twin sunroofs to completely enclosed range now is 36 to 38 on oh, new okay. D6s yeah. and there's a temperature, a standard temperature change as well from 85 degrees of old D series engines now to 80 degrees. Right. Okay. So we're looking for 80 degrees working temperature, we're looking at plenty of volts and we're looking at uh, 3600 to 3800 degrees. Working temperature. And for 
those who aren't aware, there's no speed limit in Pool Harbour. Is it between October and October March? And, yes, October and March, they relax the speed limit in this side of the harbour. Yeah. So you can speed up a bit this side of the harbour this time of year. Here we go. Up and running. Conditions, is it better to be calmer? Or uh, would you? No, we just do it regardless. Yeah. By winter time, it's fine because the speed limit's relaxed. So yeah. We're, we can do it in any weather conditions. But summertime, we're limited. If it was a southeasterly gale, we won't be going out. No. Pool Harbour entrance, Portsmouth entrance, all of the ugly places in a southeasterly gale. Yeah. But if I scroll into We've got 82% of fuel and we've got fuel flow and uh, economy total showing. So this is your typical cruising speed you'd say on the 310, we're just under 3000 RPM here. That's right. We're pulling, what, 24 knots did you say, sorry? Yeah, 24 knots. 24 yeah. knots. I hope you can read the screen, but that's 48 litres an hour and 0.5 of a litre per nautical mile. That's a good economical cruising speed. And nice and quiet in here at that speed as well. Of course the engine is just down there, it's just under this hatch inside the wheelhouse with us but uh, at this RPM the engine isn't working too hard so it's it's not too loud. Made that look very easy David. Oh yeah I've had a bit of practice. <laughs> no. It does demonstrate what you can do with a single engine though. It it? Does, Certainly on the stern no, drive. No one is to say we often have customers say how can I handle a single engine boat there was no one ahead and one astern and there was no belt and braces or uh, overpowering I was just slipping it in and out of gear it actually cool. makes life simpler I mean, it's a different story with a shaft drive but with a stern drive yeah it's um you know it, it's quite simple really because you've just got the one to think about this is surely as handleable as any uh, twin engine shaft uh, yeah uh, I agree outright. So there's a bit of a checklist you have to go through all the the system's domestic 
plumbing. We tick off every single system on the boat, so everything from uh, domestic plumbing through to batteries to shore power uh, to obviously the gas for the hob and the oven. Uh, we check all the, like, the, the, the locker hinges, the drawers. Um, so there's, on, a, on a three 10 Marics like this, there's, there's, there's a best part of a day's work to run through to run through that. Obviously, the bigger the boat, the more complex the boat is, the longer that takes because there's obviously more systems to do. Um, and then also something that also takes us quite a lot of time, if an owner wants it, is um, teak treatments as well. Right. Um, so, uh, so typically uh, on on a Marix like this, for example, uh, we'd we'd often put a, a, a sealer on the deck, a Semco sealer on the on the teak decking. So this teak uh, has arrived. It's untreated. The, the teak arrives completely untreated, uh, bare, if you like, uh, which obviously looks great when you see it out of the box. But that that will turn, you know, that will turn grey silver within no more than probably three or four weeks if we don't put anything on it. Um, so some of our owners like to just die back to silver grey but um, you know uh, other owners prefer us to put a sealer on it to then yeah. keep the colour in it so. yeah um, and again obviously the amount of work involved in that depends on the size of the boat um, and of course the weather and, and yeah often not that easy to do in the uh, no. in, in the winter but um, but we, we, we work around it as much as we can so. yeah so that's it that's the boat having its final little wash off that is the commissioning process done very slick and Huge thanks to Wessex Marine for letting us behind the scenes to have a look at, at what goes into the process. And remember, if you want to see the full review of this boat, we have done one. It's on the channel and the link is in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do subscribe so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks a lot for watching.